afternoon and welcome to today's video. So today, as promised, we're going to be looking at the 1984 brochure here. And uh, this one is dated 684, so June 1984. There are quite a few changes to the previous brochure that we were looking at. So there are quite a few things which have actually changed. Introduction of new models. So let's get started. One of the biggest changes is the introduction of the professional series here. And that was certainly an exciting development for uh, 84. So let's get started. We'll be looking at uh, obviously the television and video range and also the audio range as well. Best picture of all time, the best sound all round. So we are still using that tagline, obviously. And starting off with the 14 inch portables, both non remote and remote versions, I believe TX90, if I recall. Uh, obviously, this one and this one available with the TA127DC battery adapter. Coming into the 16 inch colour portables, both non remote and remote versions, there. So, those haven't changed from earlier in 1984. No real. No real big developments there. And then we've got our 20 inch non remote and 22 inch non remote versions, probably using the TX9 chassis. So TX9 on the 20 inch, definitely, and as I said, TX9 probably on the 22s. And coming into the 22 inch remote control sets, there, as you can see all the way up to 26 inch remote and non-remote sets. And that's really the end of sort of effectively the intro, uh, sort of lower end intro into the range. And then we get on to the Teletext sets. So obviously not really much has changed as regards the Teletext offerings. There's still quite a nice big introduction into teletext, pretty much using the same images and the same text as the previous brochures. And again, still focusing on special groups and obviously so the people of age, so to speak. Really, there's nothing sort of really much has changed um, with any of the sort of teletext text, effectively, to be honest. Nothing really much has changed here. We've got the 20 inch uh, colour TV. Again, that's going to be the TX9, 580X tube. Then we've got the TX10s probably here. Uh, those are the 22 and 26 inch television sets. I'm not sure if these are actually TX100s at this time, to be honest with you. Um, not 100% certain. It is possible they were actually using um, an earlier version of the TX100 chassis. Now one set that is definitely a TX10 was this, the 22 inch professional series colour TV also known as 22B5. I have never seen one of these come up for sale. Um, I did hear that a lot of them were used in betting shops um, and a lot of them were used extensively in betting shops for displaying sort of various betting shop type information. Um, obviously once they reached the end of their life it was usually because the uh, tubes had suffered extreme amounts of burning. It uh, is sort of really the um, uh, sort of the gear X of uh, the TX10 chassis. You've got two remote controls um, you've also got a microcomputer brain which obeys every command from one of the dual product remote controls which operates both television and video recorders via the television. Instant push button selection for up to 32 different preset and memorised programmes. It had frequency synthesis tuning which allows automatic search for best possible signal and ensures best reception. No manual tuning here, it was all automatic. We also had memory store for preferred settings, including mono sound or super sound. We had full teletext capability, uh, with advanced features allowing page selection and hold, without interruption, viewing, 
and we had a connector facility for video recorders, games and home computers compatible with most Ferguson Video Star electronic recorders and complete with matching video slash loudspeaker stand. So there we go, that really was top of the range for 1984. And then we come, well, lower in down in the uh, stereo set range with the 20 inch, uh, 20 inch stereo set there, the 3V32 underneath. And the 22 inch version, again with another 3V32. Then we got the monochromes, nothing much has changed here, certainly nothing has changed on the uh, the larger sets, I actually do wonder if they actually sold any to be honest with you, I'm sure they did, but uh, yeah, nothing much has changed. A lot of portables were sold, you do see quite a few of these coming up, but you never really see any of these ones, so yeah, portables, a lot of people still sort of use black and white for a portable, but uh, not really many people had a black and white set for their main set, they would sort of probably just rather buy a smaller colour portable. Then we got the various specifications, a lot of these sets were available with um, an optional AV interface which was in keeping with uh, the offerings of the time. And nothing much has changed as regards the portable video offerings, so we still got the same um, video star portable recorder and camera. And video recorder wise, we had the 3V38, the 3V36, and there's actually no 3V35 um, in the June catalogue. Your 38 is your minimum entry level, there's no remote for that one. Then you go to the 36, that would be your next one up, with remote and stereo capabilities. And still top of the range for 84 is the 3V32, so they really did get a lot of mileage out of the, uh, the 3V32. Uh, the 31 was discontinued uh, probably early 83, but the 32 was still um, coming up as the top of the range model for a number of years. Which sort of just goes to show just how advanced the design actually was. And also waiting in the wings for uh, probably 85 or so was the 3V43 with hi-fi recording and long play. But uh, that will be a story for another day. Ferguson Video Star accessories, not really much has changed there. Similar sort of thing. The audio, we still got the stereo record player, which in this brochure is actually shown right at the beginning of the audio section and not at the end, uh, like the previous brochure from 84. Very similar setup with the Stereo Master Hi-Fi systems, exactly the same pretty much. In fact, to be honest with you, the, there is not really much that's changed within the audio offerings. We are pretty much offering exactly the same range of audio products as they were earlier in 84. Um, still with the uh, the Ferguson Escort personal stereo, that's still available. And still available with a range of portable cassette recorders, clock radios, and the same range of... Um, portable cassette players as well. So nothing really much has changed here, all of the same models pretty much available, albeit uh, for example this one, the 25, is actually now shown with the speakers detached, obviously to show that you can detach the speakers, and that's pretty much it, there's not really so much else that's changed there. And obviously there's our specifications, nothing really much has changed. Pretty much the same as it was in the brochure earlier in 84. That brings us to the end of that brochure. So in the next episode we're going to be taking a look at, let's have a look, so we've done 84, that was our two, ah yes, so we're going to be looking at the Video Star Complete range from November 84. 
and there is quite a bit of a difference in November 84. We do have a new number of new models. We're also going to be taking a look at this, which is the complete Ferguson 1985 monitor television range, which is going to be quite interesting. That is from June 85, that's a year later than this particular brochure here. So yeah, we've got quite a few things to look at next time. But for the moment, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to put this one back into the correct order, so that one will slide in there. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit the like button, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.